Thank you very much for joining me here, despite the great weather outside. My name is Matthias Schmidt-Fitzner. I'm a digital partner at McKinsey. I started off at uh, AOL, did auctions at Ricardo and the Lego, um, did search at uh, Alta Vista and Yahoo, did games at King, and did commerce publishing and commerce at Deutsche Telekom. So you can see I'm already an old guy. That is why I have a few cards here as well to memorize what I want to say. Um, in the next couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you about how the environment for corporate innovation is changing these times. We as Digital McKinsey, a company incumbents um, in their digital transformation, as well as we help startups from a certain scale to unlock the next stage of growth. In the corporate world, we see there's a huge gap between ambition and belief and execution. Yeah, it's more than 80% of the global executive that really believe that innovation is extremely important. However, only 6% are actually satisfied with the innovation power of their organization. And we actually see that, right? I mean, there are lots of incumbents that are being hit by disruption. And it's not a new phenomenon. Um, it's a pretty old thing, actually, that it's hardly the industry leaders that lead disruption. It is rather small, nimble companies that put the emphasis on new technology and disrupt the marketplace. Uh, one very old example is uh, it's, uh, oil lamps and electricity. And the newer ones that all of us know definitely are U-Band taxis, WhatsApp and telcos, or Blockbuster and uh, Netflix. So the question is, why even the um, top companies struggle in doing innovation? Yeah? They're asset rich, they have massive resources, they still struggle to do innovation. The reason is that when you're very asset rich, um, you're very much focused on predictability and uh, efficiency. Yeah? Your whole operating model, your whole governance, your whole mindset is around efficiency and predictability. And that goes along with a fear to change. Yeah, so when you think, for example, about ideation, many of those large corporates do not really think outside the box, or they only think halfway. If you think about processes, yeah, to embrace VC-like funding upon delivery, or to embrace using engagement KPIs, or to have agile organization forms, yeah, that is completely different, diametrically different to how corporates actually act. If you think about connectivity, yeah? You have siloed optimization. You hardly interact within departments. Yeah? You don't share data. You don't share knowledge. And even less so with external partners. And last not least, when you think about um, HR and assets, yeah? there's a mandate for synergies. You hardly have really digital profiles. And you have this kind of intrinsic fear of change. So it seems that being an asset-rich incumbent is a pretty bad place to start business model innovation from. And um, does that mean that they are all easy prey for pure digital players? Interestingly enough, there's a the change in the world. Yeah? It's uh, with a change of customer expectations and customer demands. They demand more than one touch point from their service uh, provider or seller. And we even found in studies that the more channels the service provider or seller provides, the more valuable uh, the company be, uh, gets. So um, I'm happy I have these cards. So we all know the famous quotes of company Z is the biggest Y without owning X. Yeah? We all know these examples. But actually, this is changing. It's not valid anymore. Very innovative companies heavily invest into fixed assets. So Uber, for example, buys thousands of cars. Delivery services, set up restaurants, or set up kitchen hubs. And last not least, online retail platform, i.e. physical retailers as well. Why is that? Well, as I said, the changed custom expectations. So the usual platforms have to capture more elements of the value chain in order to interact with their customer and stay relevant. The other one is innovation and new competition. Yeah, so the disruptors from former times have to be careful to not be disrupted e.g. Uber and self-driving cars. And last but not least is political pressure. Yeah, so many platforms have to actually acquire physical assets to get around regulation and still be able to drive their business. So does this development mean that there's a new horizon, uh, sorry, a new light at the horizon of corporates? Uh, because corporates can run huge assets. Corporates are well-oiled machines when it goes, goes uh, for efficiency. And uh, therefore, we might ask the question, 
can they beat the pure digits player in this new battleground? Well, the bad news is that the pure digital players run their physical assets exactly like they run their digital assets. Yeah? So they are constantly striving for digital excellence. They measure everything. They embrace analytics as a day-to-day -day operation, no matter whether it's digital or a physical asset. They uh, are ready to change, and they have a mindset of um, agility and staying constantly on top of the customer demand. So. Um, while corporates might have certain advantages in this new battle round, um, they still have one big challenge. And this one big challenge is to forget about their protected and learned way how to operate things. Yeah, in order to succeed in innovation, they have to embrace, and much more important, they have to act upon customer simplicity, cross-functionality, and risk-taking mindset. We learned a few things from our, our clients out there. Uh, the first thing is, Innovation is not limited to digital. Yeah? It is not only product services, it's also people, processes, and IHR. The second one is you have to trust and enable your teams in order to unlock, unlock their innovation potential. The third one is you have to go all in when it's about innovation. Yeah? You have to change the way you run uh, businesses, you, um, you um, evolve businesses, and you measure businesses as well. And the last thing is, um, this mindset change has to be supported from the top. And that doesn't mean waterfall, yeah? but if a mindset change is not completely supported from the top level, it will never succeed. Everybody else will feel unsure. So these core beliefs are no rocket science, right? Everybody should know that, but they're really hard to, to embrace. So the question is, how can we start the revolution to initiate this mindset change? Yeah, one thing is to do it from the inside, with ins internal resources, internal people, to change the, the uh, operating model and governance. The other one is to hire externals as a nucleus and then have a change coming uh, through the company. Both ways are very lengthy and very tedious and only hardly lead to success. There's a third way, and that is an accelerated way to infuse a mindset change, and that's cooperating with, with startups. And that could happen in different ways. It could happen through acquisition, like Walmart who acquired Jet and took the, the acquired knowledge across all departments of Walmart, the acquired startup knowledge. Yeah? And the Walmart co-founder, Mark Lohr, actually was appointed e-commerce CEO and still is e-commerce CEO. The second way could be investment, like Nestle invested in the Freshly not only to enter this growth market, but also actually to get the mindset of user analytics in day-to-day -day business operations across all other Nestle operations as well. And the third one is incubation, like Pizza Hut, who incubated an e-commerce unit to start the change from being a pizza delivery service into a tech company that is in pizza delivery. And they started in the UK and now do it around the world. We had um, the uh, chance to accompany Pizza Hut on this journey and to help them to incubate this unit. Uh, and we did that by hiring 20 external talents, digital talents, to run this unit. We launched the new platform across all channels and uh, managed to increase conversion rate by 30%, which is three times the first year target. And last but not least, we did that first in UK and France and uh, rolled it out across 850 different pizza huts. So that's actually a pretty substantial um, uh, success. What is important is that the most important um, uh, competitor to Pizza Hut actually copied one of the elements that we introduced on this platform. So we put Pizza Hut on the front, on the front foot again, and not in the back foot as before. So to summarize, there's a new opportunity out there. I know, Marco, I'm quick, sorry. There's a new opportunity out there, which is um, physical assets are in vogue again. The second one is um, you have to grasp the opportunity, and you only can grasp it by changing the mindset. There's an accelerated way to change your mindset, as we learned. And last but not least, you have to learn from the startups, and you have to start to work with this, like a startup. You can do it unit by unit, but you have to do it with support from the top, and that needs to be sustainable. Last thing, 830,000 startups, uh, 30, startups in Europe, 350,000 in Germany, 170,000 in Berlin. We at McKinsey are, nuclear, are in this ecosystem, and we are very happy to collaborate with you to help you to discuss corporate innovation as well as uh, collaboration between startups and corporates. There are 1,500 uh, startups here at NOAA, and we are very happy to start collaborating with you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you.